Hey, if you're watching the replay of this previous live stream, check the description down below for timestamps so you can get around to the areas and the things that you want to see and the information that you want from this live stream. Thanks again for tuning in. Let's get started, shall we? Hey, make sure you guys check out our channel partner, Gamersups. Go to gamersups.gg and use code Zach for 10% off. Keto friendly, zero calorie, zero sugar, nootropics, antioxidants, all sorts of good stuff. I drink it to keep energized, to keep myself going. So check them out, gamersups.gg. Use code Zach. We're going to get started here pretty quick.
we go. If I'm too loud for you, I'm not sorry. It's Sunday. Uh, it's Sunday. It's the weekly ZTT, Z ZTT live stream. I don't even... Did we ever come up with a name? I don't think we ever came up with a name. I don't think we ever came up with a name. Uh, hey, everybody. How you doing? I hope I'm coming through clear here. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, because I didn't do a stream on Thursday, and I, I was fiddling with some things. Um, I don't know. You guys aren't complaining in the chat, so... All right, it seems like everything is coming through clear. We're good, we're good, all right. <laughs> all right, currently we have 24 of you watching, 22 on YouTube, two of you on Twitter, oh my gosh. Dual streaming, it's amazing, <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, and you can do it as well if you want to. Um, you know, it's completely up to you if you want to do streaming. Um, this is my way of delaying while I find the overlay. Here it is. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the stream. This stream is powered and sponsored by StreamYard. If you need to stream to multiple locations and you want to make it simple and easy, pick a mic, pick a, uh, a camera and away you go. You don't want to mess around with all sorts of settings and weird things and whatever. Check out StreamYard. You can even use the service for free, uh, but you can stream to multiple locations. Tonight we're on YouTube and we're also streaming to Twitter. I can't say Twitter. It doesn't sound right. YouTube. Anyway, it's what I use here. It's what you guys are watching on right now. And you can do different overlays like you see right here and whatnot. Very simple to use. So thanks again to the people at StreamYard for sponsoring and powering all the streams here at Zach Talks Heck for the next year, all of 2021 and, and hopefully beyond. So thank you to our sponsor. Appreciate you. All right, people. It is Sunday. Appreciate you guys being here. Now, I'm looking at the stream thing over here. And I'm, I'm looking at the comments here, and I see you people. I see you. First of all, I thank you for joining me here on Sunday. We are going to discuss and talk about the Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra. Did you guys hear about this? They were announced officially this past Thursday. Uh, I didn't do a stream. I didn't do much really. <laughs> I had uh, I had a sty. If you guys know what a sty is, it's like a bump underneath your eyelid. It was over here in the corner, and my I, I was like I was full on Quasimodo. You know, it, it was it was terrible. I could not see out of this eye for two days. It was terrible. It was terrible. So uh, nobody wants to see that. I mean, you have to put up with this normally as it is. Um, can you imagine me with looking like that and constantly rubbing my eye? In fact, if you guys go back to the painfully honest tech podcast on Tuesday you'll notice I was rubbing my eye a lot, and that's where it came from. It wasn't pink eye, it was just a, a sty. I don't know how. Anyway, uh, 21 of you on YouTube, four of you over on Twitter. Appreciate you guys being here. Now, before we get into things, I have a very special announcement in regards to this channel. Um, I, I had kind of a, I had kind of a, uh, I, I guess you want to call it. I had kind of a an epiphany. Um, something happened. Something happened to me uh, this past. Uh, what day was it? Uh, I think it was Sunday night. Sunday night, I was working on uh, releasing a video in response to um, a manufacturer, an OEM, whose phones I've I've shown on the channel before, and they had given me the B roll and and their own marketing stuff and stuff and things like that. Uh, you know what they would normally release like during CES or you know normally if I was at CES physically but of course you guys know if CES was virtually this year um, I would film myself but in this case they just sent me all this stuff and I was going to do a quick breakdown using their footage and everything of like about these new devices and everything and I got recording with it and everything and I just was not happy with the recording it wasn't like this where it was live and it's you know the energy and everything like that it was me sitting here and I also did a stand up I also recorded a second time standing up and I didn't, and I just didn't like the way it felt and looked. That's not to say I don't like my past uh, published things that I've done, but the evolution of what I've done here at Zach Talks Tech, what I've done from going from you know you guys just seeing my hands to uh, face on camera and you know, sitting you know sitting down and then standing up and, and you know, everything, and now we're to this whole live stream interactive, no second takes. You know, got to be careful with what you say and how you present it. I like this better. Like I like this raw, in front, 
going at it right away. It's not for everybody, but it's something I like. I come from that marketing sales background. So I didn't like what I had recorded. It has nothing to do with the phones or anything like that. It had nothing to do with that brand at all. It was just the format that I thought I could go back to and I did not like it at all. So I thought to myself, you know, what, you know, what could I do? Yes, I could go back to daily streaming. I have, I, I had a really great time with all of you doing daily streaming back in November, 30 days of streams. I loved it. Give me a challenge every day, a new thumbnail, a new topic. Everything was, you know, it was good information. And uh, I think a lot of people liked it. And my numbers showed that it worked quite well for the channel. It wasn't the greatest for the channel, but it worked well. So I'm happy to announce to all of you this. First of all, this will be the last Sunday stream that I'm doing on this channel. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Calm down. This will be the last Sunday stream I do on this channel. Starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow and Wednesdays. This is how this is how the schedule is going to work. Monday and Wednesdays, I will be streaming at 9:15 Eastern. Monday and Wednesday, 9:15 Eastern. Monday and Wednesday, 9:15 Eastern. So stream just like this, it'll have a topic or topics We'll go into it, we'll take questions and comments, all sorts of stuff from the chat, what you guys are used to. No more Sunday thing, just Monday and Wednesday. But then on Tuesday and, and uh, Thursday, you guys are gonna get clips from me from these live streams. I will be taking parts of these live streams and taking them out and cutting them up and making them into quick three to five, maybe seven minute clips that will be released during the day. So I'm actually gonna start with the content from tonight's stream and give you guys one or two clips tomorrow. So to reiterate, Monday live stream. Tuesday, you guys get some clips from that previous live stream. Wednesday live stream. Thursday, you get some clips from that previous live stream or whatever's relevant. So if you want to be part of these clips and the interactive portion, be here for the live stream. If you can't catch the live stream, you can kind of catch up with the clips that will be released during the day. So we're going to try this out for a couple months. I'm thinking till about March or so, which is about two months. Look at the data. Go from there. So that's the plan. I hope that's all clear. Now you guys are probably wondering, what about Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Well, <laughs> I still need to have a life outside of this and some break time, but I'm also going to reserve Friday, Saturday and Sundays for releasing additional published content. So full published reviews. If a company sends me something, you know, if, uh, a separate published review, if there's breaking news or something relevant, uh, then, you know, maybe some, maybe a stream there as well, as well, these Monday and Wednesday streams will be very topical. So it'll be what's happening in tech in the tech world and whatnot. So if you guys are looking for relevant, you know, talking about what's going on, what might be trending, you know, with it, whether it kind of, whether it be Android type news or, or Apple or gadgets, or whatever, the kind of stuff that I do here, um, you know, those Mondays and Wednesday streams will be there for you. So again, that's 9, 15 PM Eastern Mondays, Wednesdays, and the clips are Tuesdays and Thursdays. So there you go. That's, that's the announcement. That's some of the changes we're going to make. And so tonight is the last Sunday stream. I'll be taking clips from tonight and firing them off out there for you guys for tomorrow, which wouldn't normally happen. So I guess next week is the first full week of this, but tonight's kind of the soft launch. So I hope you guys enjoy that. If you can't always make it for the streams, you have the chance to check out the, cl the clips there. They'll be published on Tuesdays and Thursdays, live streams, Mondays and Wednesdays. And of course, I will still be doing the Painfully Honest Tech podcast on Tuesdays with Jason and Viper. That doesn't change at all. So I'm basically streaming Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. <laughs> I thought about today. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing three, eight, three in a row. But uh, only two of them are really mine. <laughs> the other one I'm just uh, co-hosting. So I see the chat. I see all you guys. Uh, we're going to go through here and say our hellos. I wanted to get that announcement out of the way so you guys kind of knew where things were going. So when you start seeing published stuff from me next like tomorrow, <laughs> you're gonna see public short couple, uh, you know, clip videos from me come tomorrow. Uh, you know what's going on, okay? 
Hello to you, go. How you doing? We got Rosted. How you doing tonight? Mike Jack is here going through Don Coven. Now, anybody you guys see here in the green, green text their name and a little logo, these are channel members. Now, you can become a channel member as well. It is not required, but it is appreciated. There are little perks. Uh, we still need to schedule this month's private stream for the members only at that level two there. So uh, we'll still figure out a date there and whatnot. Uh, but if, thank you to all you members. Do appreciate the support. Tech for your needs. How you doing? Going through here. We got Bob Grimes. How you doing, sir? Andy Wong coming in from Hong Kong. We got Jesus. Uh, Stephen D, I think we already talked about there. Yep. Genosis. Also, one of my moderators. Appreciate you being here. Going through, going through. Genosis is doing lots of stuff here tonight. Of course, we got me. Like, I, I hate that how the actual uh, logos don't show up there, but I get it. I understand StreamYard. They're working on it. Jermaine King, how you doing? Let me turn down this volume just a little bit. There we go. What else we got here? Who else we got here? We've got uh, Ace Rockola as usual. Uh, Bob Grimes. Yep. Zed. Uh, is that like Z? Well, okay. So Zed is Canadian. You guys know that Z. But I say Z because the majority of you guys are uh, watching from down there in the USA. Appreciate you guys. Aaron Martin. How you doing? We got uh, Sale Hend Hendrix. Ultra is overpriced, he thinks. There you go. We're going to talk about that. Uh, sorry, I think that her name is... I said Seal. Sorry, I think it's Kyle. Excuse me. I'm used to seeing with a K. Excuse me. Uh, going through here. Got Jermaine over on Twitter there. Appreciate it. All right, going through here. Alan Mobley. Also in the house. And I think that's it. Uh, personality Disorder says, I don't see the Galaxy S21 being a great device. Do the LG Rollable um, or Galaxy Fold 3 seem like the Android devices to purchase this year? You know, we're going we're gonna to talk about rollables. We might talk about rollables and foldables and whatnot. Um, you know, actually, let's, let's, let's get it. Let me give you guys my, I guess you want to call it hot take <laughs> on this. When it comes to rollables and foldables, uh, I think, you know, obviously, if you want one, go for it, right? Would I recommend a, a foldable or rollable to the quote unquote average consumer? or everyday tech consumer? No, not yet. Not with the current technology. And that's not to say it's bad. It's a matter of durability, okay? Um, and because people are, are generally, I don't wanna say they're generally, but it seems like people are not overly careful with a lot of their things. So for example, I can take my Note 10 Plus here and I can just toss it on the table just like that, okay? Uh, you know, it's an, it's a soft mouse pad over here. <laughs> it's the leather nose, no, uh, no, no, it's the leather nomad uh, mouse pad. But I could just kind of like that, right? Um, if it was a foldable or rollable, like if I had one of those devices, I wouldn't do that. I would actually place the device down. I would I would consciously be more careful with it. It's the same way that sometimes when I go to restaurants or when we used to go to restaurants or we go out for dinners with people, uh, I would see people just put their phones right next to their drink or their beverage, whatever you want to call it. And I would cringe at that because I'm just like, you know, if that, if that drink falls over, I mean, whether you have waterproofing or not, I mean, you're going to have some problems. Uh, so I always keep like, for example, my devices in my pocket somewhere safe. Um, you know, right now, for example, with the galaxy full devices, they actually come with warnings in the device that says, if your fingernails are too long, you know, things like that, don't use this or be careful with it kind of thing, right? So uh, if I were just to hand over it to anybody, I mean, I've seen people break their device just from tossing on a table like that or just being not careful, constantly dropping their devices. My wife is an example of this. I'm not making fun of her, but this is my wife's a perfect example of this. She has to have a drop protection case because she drops her phone two or three times a day. It's, it's amazing. I don't know how she does it. She'll be sitting there with it and all of a sudden it falls. I'm like, did you fall asleep? What what, what happened? <laughs> so I, I don't, so I, I think it's a durability thing. Why I wouldn't recommend right now. Of course, if someone's going to be getting that kind of device, I would definitely let, I mean, pay attention what the manufacturer is saying and what to do or not to do and understand that you have a very delicate device. I still feel, I mean, we're only really two years, almost three years into 
foldables and rollables kind of being the whole next gen kind of thing they're still very much in their infancy and they're still in my opinion very much a luxury um consumer electronic you know a luxury mobile device compared to the norm okay um will that time come where it's the norm for everybody i'm sure it will that time is not now so i would not recommend to the everyday person unless they know what they're getting into and they know they can be careful i wouldn't recommend it right now and also from a price pump standpoint holy cow <laughs> because honestly uh what can a foldable or rollable device do uh that would give a better experience over what i can do with this slab yes i'm aware that it can fold up and be a smaller form factor in your pocket purse whatever your bag whatever but is there is there something like do the apps work differently do they re, uh do things interact differently because it's foldable or rollable no there are some cases like for example with the z fold for example where you can have it you know in that kind of position there you know if, the, if this was a z fold for example and you could have you know information down here in your screen up there that i can see as a bit of an, an advantage but other than that on that one instance that one type of device i don't see the draw for uh the main consumers right now for the for the general consumer you know public right now <laughs> the people that are buying these devices in droves for us nerds for all of us geeks yeah let's go for it let's give her it's fun so those are just some of my thoughts anyway let's go through the rest of the chat here i know i'm missing a bunch of stuff here um dun -dun -dun -dun. and also the nice thing people uh with the clips as well that are coming out on tuesdays and thursdays and there will there'll be uh, hopefully one or two clips tomorrow um you guys don't have to go wait for me you know scrolling through and whatnot if you're watching the replays and so it'll be nice it'll be really nice um bob oh here's something bob says i've had it with massive phones i'll be using my 12 mini forever you know the more i look at the mini the more I, I i'm drawn to it but then i remember back when i got my when i got my iphone 11 pro uh i originally bought the iphone 11 pro and i eventually went back for the pro max because i just couldn't stand the smaller screen so i understand the draw but i know that i would be because i consume with so much media and whatnot and if you can deal with a smaller screen hey go for it but that's uh that's that, mm, that, good. that's my hot take my hot take bob <laughs> but i get where you're coming from man digital slang what's up how you doing hey l hefe reviews thank you sir he says smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe you guys never hear that from youtubers they never tell you to smash the like button and subscribe it's like man wouldn't that get annoying if you heard that in every single youtube video that you opened up playing around it's no it's known to help <laughs> it's it's a best practice okay uh, it, it works <laughs> uh, I generally leave the information for the end and I usually put a graphic on the on the screen that's just me all right going through here all right so we're gonna get to the bottom here and then we're gonna dive into thing uh, <laughs> Bob says be like rich and take your shirt off for $50 so I think you mean a $50 super chat, right, Bob? Okay, nobody wants me to take off my shirt. Nobody wants that. Um, um, however, like, I'm not going to tell you the amount, but it has to be more than $50. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm expensive, right? Like, usually I need dinner and something else before I'm going to take off my clothes. So, <laughs> thank you, Bob. Appreciate <laughs> Bob being a troublemaker. Appreciate it. All right. We got the man about tech here, Viper. How you doing, sir? going through here okay so i think we've uh i think i think excuse me <laughs> i think we've caught up to everything uh country swag said i just left my s10 plus big screen and all uh oh country swag let's know what you got there yeah jeff i know where you're coming from i know where you're coming from i hear you all right people zach's gaming studio is insanity dude this is nothing like uh, my PlayStation 5 is upstairs. The other TV in the den on the other side of this wall here has the stadias hooked up to it. Um, yeah, this is just this is just a couple things. In fact, I thought about taking out the... Uh, I thought about changing this. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot that lamp. You guys see Baby Yoda? 
Baby Yoda over here. Mm. All right. All right, people. What are we here to talk about? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the, the, the title of today's stream is Samsung Galaxy S21 Key Features and Comparisons. So I want to go through. So if you're not a spec person, if you just kind of get bored by that kind of thing, we're going to break down the spec differences uh, between the three different models. And then we're also going to do a quick comparison between uh, what I thought was the best value in a Samsung device last year, which is the Galaxy S20 FE. You guys know I loved using the FE when I got it. I still am pretty sure I'll be picking up one, although these new S21s are very, very enticing, especially when you look at the price difference and what is offered between the S21, that's the introductory model, and the S20 FE. And there's basically a $100 difference for the outright pricing. Again, if you go through your carrier, you're gonna get different pricing altogether. All right. Let's go through it. And I'll, you know, we'll go through a couple things too. I mean, I think you guys know that Samsung is putting a little bit less in the box. <laughs> I'll give you guys my thoughts about that as well. Um, but let's get into this here. Um, first of all, I'm just gonna double check at the uh, stream over here. There we go, we're good there. All right. So let's get into this. Appreciate the 32 of you here. We got 29 on YouTube. We got three of you on Twitter. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Now you guys know this is my favorite website here. I'm gonna share this with you. Let's do a spec comparison between the three models, okay? Now, the easiest way for me to describe this to you is this. Between the Galaxy S21 and the 21 Plus, your main differences are screen size, battery size, and the back of the S21, your introductory model, is made of plastic, which I know is a source of contention, and some people have been upset with this, but hopefully when I show you guys the comparison between the S21 and the S20 FE, uh, it'll make some sense there for you, okay? So we're definitely gonna go through this. Now, uh, normally with uh, the GSM's website here, you, know, you can normally click on differences and there wouldn't, uh, for example, between the S21, so the first one on the left here is the S21, excuse me, first one on the left here is the S21, and then the next one in the middle here is the S21 Plus, and then you have the Ultra. If you guys recall, actually, I'm going to close this off. I'm going to close this off and kind of explain this to you uh, if you didn't realize. So if you watch the keynote from Samsung, they first presented the Galaxy Buds Pro, which look amazing. Of course, we kind of got an early preview with digital slang and uh, El Hefe reviews videos. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to the full reviews from them. So if you guys don't watch uh, digital slang or El Jefe reviews, please make sure you, if you guys are into earbuds and whatnot and want some detailed breakdowns of the Galaxy Buds Pro, Make sure you guys are subscribed to them and you check them out. I'm pretty sure most of you know them. Um, but if you guys remember the keynote for Unpacked this past Thursday and the way they presented things, they presented the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Plus together, okay? And they didn't make a lot of distinctions between the two. Um, they obviously pointed out the larger size and the S21 Plus does have some additional colors. So again, those are your main differences, size, the plastic back, obviously the battery and the screen, you know, screen size are gonna be different and uh, some additional colors with the S21 Plus. And the reason they presented those two together is because they're kind of one in the same, right? Again, the differences between them, that's it. Same cameras, same selfie camera, same software, uh, everything else, right? So, and then you take, for example, the, the S21 Ultra and that had a completely separate presentation right they, they almost could have cut that up into two separate videos okay and the reason for that is because obviously the ultra has the additional camera obviously the size and and, and so forth and of course uh, you can also use an s pen or an s a different type of s pen with the new s21 ultra by the way i do not think i do not think for a second that samsung is getting rid of rid of or discontinuing the note series yes we saw the addition of the s pen being brought in for the s21 series however 
It's only on the Ultra model. Uh, I think the Note, despite sales numbers, and of course, I don't think we know exact numbers, I still think that that Note series, the way it's kind of paved the way for big phones, what they've done, they kind of went against the grain with it. There's still too much in that for Samsung to say bye-bye. And also, if you look at the different types of S Pens that are being available, along with third parties that are making S Pens for the Galaxy uh, S21 Ultra, um, it still leaves a reason for uh, Samsung to make a Note device. So I firmly believe we will still see a new Note this year. I am, I'm almost, I'm almost <laughs> willing to put money on it, uh, but I don't think the note is going away. I do not think it's going away. More RGB? <laughs> Maybe. All right, people, let's go back to, let's go back to this comparison here. We're going to go through this as, we're going to go through this as quickly as possible here and uh, give you guys a comparison. So again, on the, the, on the far right, we have the Ultra. And again, S21 on the, on the left here, S21 plus in the middle. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about this website with GSM Arena, um, they do a great job over there. You can click on this button here that says differences, and you can see you know whatever's bolded is different. Now, obviously, you know size differences here. Okay, um, again, the back plastic back, Gorilla Glass on the back. Okay, both are using an aluminum frame. Okay. Now the reason uh, the reason I uh, I don't know if I want to get into this yet. Okay, we'll get, we'll get into this. We'll get into this. The outright pricing, the starting pricing of the Galaxy S21 with the plastic back is $799. The outright pricing of the S20 FE is currently $699. So it's $100 more for the new Galaxy S21. When I get to this screen here, we will be comparing between the S20 FE and the S21, okay? because they're as close as possible in terms of comparisons, okay? And it actually has me on the fence as well. Do I go with the S20 or the S21? So I'm gonna hopefully make a decision here tomorrow. So, going through here. So, uh, again, one of some of the most brightest, some of the brightest uh, Galaxy devices we've seen this year. We saw them talk about that in terms of nits and whatnot. Uh, I personally have never had a problem. Again, 6.2 inches on the regular, 6.7 on the, on the on the plus there, 1080 by 2400 display. And I know that again, that's been a, a point of contention for some people. Uh, both of them are using a 1080 display. And I'm not here to defend that. Uh, that's obviously a decision to help bring down prices and to hopefully reach more market. Samsung has seen that. The devices are less money this year than they were last year. Uh, especially if you go through a carrier, depending on agreements and whatnot, trade-ins. You know, you might be able to get these devices for <laughs> almost next to nothing. Um, for myself personally, as an example, when I was using the S20 FE, yeah, it was a 1080 screen, um, but that 120 hertz, what a difference maker. And it's still a beautiful screen. You know, it's still able to watch obviously high def and whatnot. So you need to decide for yourself if, if, that's, a, if that's a deal breaker or whatnot. I know for some people it is. So definitely something to keep in mind here. Again, you get Android 11 and One UI uh, 3.1. Um, none of my devices have updated to 3.1 yet. Um, hopefully, it's coming soon here for my Note 10. Uh, if not, when I get the S20 FE or the or the 21 or the 21 Ultra, uh, I'm going to be doing a few different videos, a few different published videos about the difference with One UI. I really like what Samsung has done over the years in terms of the disaster that TouchWiz was. I mean, let's just be honest. TouchWiz was thick. It was intrusive. It was slow. Uh, and then they cleaned things up, and then uh, they had another OS version. I can't remember what they called it. <laughs> uh, but now it's called One UI, and I really like it. The customizations, the things we saw in there with the widgets and the different sizes, the information on, on the lock screen, I really like what they showed us there. So I can't wait to kind of dive into that a little bit more and see what's going on. Now, of course, underneath the lid, powering all this, uh, depending on the area that you live in the world in North America. We got the Snapdragon 888 processor, okay? Uh, that's across the board. And again, with that, because the agreements with Android, you're gonna have at least three years of security updates um, and you know, and so forth. And obviously OS updates and everything like that. So that's good to see, although Samsung did commit to that 
last year with their devices. So, I mean, they basically down to that now because using a, a Snapdragon AAA. And that's going forward for any OEM or any other Android OEM. If you're using a Snapdragon Triple Eight and going forward, you have to do at least three years of updates. That's 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 baked in with with using that processor. That's an agreement across the board there. Okay. Going through here. Again, you're going to start at 128 gigabytes, 256 uh, gigabytes of storage, and then eight gigabytes of RAM. Okay. Now, I know there's some people out there that'll be like, oh, it needs it needs more RAM. It's got to have more energy. Okay, These are not the devices for you if you think you need that. You might obviously want to look at the, the Ultra, which has 16 or 12 gigabytes of RAM, depending on your storage size. Um, for myself personally, I can get away with 128. I've never experienced a slowdown or lagging, going even going back to my Note 10 Plus. I never had any slowdowns or lagging with the S20 FE, and I'm confident the S21 series devices will be very similar. Give me a second here. Oh, there we go. I just need to refresh that. All right, sorry about that. Now, main camera. Now, keep in mind that the camera module selfie and the rear cameras on the S21 and the S21 Plus are exactly the same. Again, the differences between those devices, the main differences are plastic back versus glass back on the 21 plus and of course obviously size battery size because of the you know, physical difference of course they're going to fill that up with battery okay um again you got a 12 megapixel main shooter along with a 64 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide okay when we get to the comparisons between the s21 and the s21 or sorry when we get to the comparisons of the s20 fe and the s21 like the new s21 uh, you guys are gonna see there's not a lot of differences between the S20 FE and the new S21, okay? Which again, which is why you have that introductory pricing. So you guys kind of see where I'm going with this. People are like, oh my God, the S21 has a plastic back. Uh. Okay, shh, shh. <laughs> it's to properly reflect pricing. And so you don't cannibalize um, or and allow and, and your previous model, the one that everybody was going nuts for, the S20 FE. Okay, and again, I'm going to show you guys that here in a bit. Okay, so hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Hopefully you see where I'm getting with this. If you see where I'm going with this, put a nod, <laughs> put a hashtag nod in the chat. Like, yeah, okay, I get, I get. It. Maybe you don't agree, but yeah, okay, I get it. Right. <laughs> All right. Again, your video stuff exactly the same. You get 8K video at 24. Uh, frames and then you got 4k at uh, 3060 1080p you know all that stuff there hdr 10 plus uh of course you're gonna have raw on there as well which is gonna be really great okay stereo speakers wi-fi uh bluetooth 5.0 battery size now you know again 6.2 inches and then 6.7 okay going 0.5 inches bigger uh you're going from a 4000 milliamp battery to a 4800 milliamp battery now, I've always said that 4,000 milliamps is the magic number for all Androids. Um, I, I I always had all day battery, even at 120 hertz with the S20 FE. So I'm confident in this battery. If, like if I can get all day battery, and that means like unplugging at 7 a.m. and being around 20% at like 5 p.m., uh, you know, I'm good with that. You know, I was getting an average of six, six and a half hours of screen on time, right? Of course, your, your, your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing, right? So... That, that's quite a jump, actually, from, from the S21 to the 21 Plus, going from 4,000 to 4,800. You get an extra 800 milliamps in there, which is nice. Okay. And again, uh, colors. So actually, I wanted to show you guys this here real quick. We're going to go to pictures on here, and we're going to go to the pictures on here. So. There we go. Yes, here we go. So the S20, uh, S21 comes in four different colors. You got this phantom pink, the violet, uh, the silver, and the kind of like a gray or black, I guess you want to call it. And then the plus has some additional colors. So you've got more of a black here. Uh, sorry, excuse me. You have a red here, and you also have this kind of the shimmering color here. I don't know about you guys, but when I first saw the leak pictures of this purple one here, like the purple with the gold, I was like, what? But now that I see more pictures of it, now that I see like some of the lifestyle pictures, and I see some people do a couple unboxings and whatnot. I'm like, you know what? I kind of dig that because I had the purple uh, Galaxy S9 Plus. I liked that purple. It was like a deep purple. This is more of a violet, but with that gold trim on there, 
Nice. By the way, S21, S21 Plus, flat screens. Say it with me, everybody. Flat screens. <laughs> so very, very happy about that. So flat screens. I really liked using the flat screen on the uh, S20, or uh, sorry, S20 FE. So yeah, it looks good. There's a 3D model there. Very, very nice. Like that flat screen, the aluminum rails. Very, very nice. Not too sure about this red. I'm not sure if this is, it's, I don't think this is as deep as the S20 FE. Again, I need to see it in person kind of thing. But, uh, you know, I really dig the, the color combinations. Again, you have some additional colors uh, with, if I go back down here, let's go down, down to colors. So phantom gray, phantom white, phantom violet, phantom pink. Okay, so again, guys, violet, gray, white, pink. Okay, that's on the S21. And then on the 21 Plus, you get a phantom black, like a true black, a phantom silver, phantom violet, which is the same between the two, uh, the pink, which is the same between the two, phantom gold, and a phantom red. Okay, so there are a couple similar colors and then some additional ones for the plus, okay? I know most people throw a case on their phones or something like that. Again, you need you need to make a decision what works best for you. So I hope that uh, really kind of clears up some of the differences uh, between the 21 and the 21 plus. Again, the key differences between the Galaxy S21, and the Galaxy S21 plus, size, battery, plastic back on the 21, the introductory model, okay? Now, I did tell you guys that we're gonna do some comparisons tonight. That's what we're gonna dive into now. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna close this off. I'm gonna go back to the chat here, see what you guys are saying, and then we'll dive into a little more comparison. Hopefully some of this information has been helpful for you guys, okay? Going through the chat here. Um, Kyle says, I hope they keep the note series. I don't like the pen. I don't like the pen and case with the ultra. The case is hideous. So uh, I wouldn't say with, <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. Um, the, the galaxy S 21 ultra, and then they put on that, that case on there. First of all, it's good that they obviously thought of a design for a case. So you can at least do that because when the leaks and the information was coming out about how there would be S pen support for the galaxy S 21 series. It was a real head scratcher. Like, how are you going to do this? There's not normally a dock. Like, you guys know how the note works, right? There's a little dock down there, so you can kind of slide that in, slide it out. You know, it's out of the way. Um, you know, I don't use my S Pen all the time myself, but it's. I've always said it's nice to have it and not need it, then need it, then and not have it. Okay. Um, but again, you need to decide. Uh, I think it makes more sense if you're the kind of person that likes S Pen support, that likes the S Pen to possibly wait for the next note or get the Note 20 Ultra. The Note 20 Ultra is still a fabulous device to pick. It's, you know, the top of the line there for Samsung for last year. Um, but it'll be nice to have that addition. Like maybe you keep that, maybe you keep that S Pen at your desk and you don't carry it with you. Maybe you just keep it for at home or for the office kind of thing. So, you know, I think Samsung's just kind of testing the grounds here to see, is there enough demand? You know, do we maybe bring out a note style complete note style galaxy next year maybe they bump the note up next year to like this time right because maybe there's enough demand of course you introduced introduced uh, the third parties they announced there at the announcement uh, uh, at the unpacked about who's going to be making s pens for them so it's not just them and also the if you guys notice the s pen for the ultra here for the s21 ultra is very different from the traditional it's a lot bigger and uh it doesn't charge and it doesn't have as much functionality as a note pen, okay? So for example, with this note pen, you know, I can push a button, take a picture, different things like that, the floating style, the floating, you know, cursors and whatnot. So there's, there are some key differences there. Very, uh, very different. It's not just a straight up pen. So, but I understand where you're coming from. Uh, Tech for Need says, we are going to have a note this year. Not sure on the future. Uh, so he said, let me read this again. <laughs> let me start over. We are going to have a note this year not sure on the future of note if the full gets an s pen in the future uh game over for the note line see i don't know about that tech for your needs 
I think that's kind of way down the line because then you kind of alienate maybe those traditional note fans that want to just have a slab. <coughs> Excuse me. And just want to have a straight foam. Maybe they don't want to go to a folding device that, again, is fragile, that has um, some of the limitations that you see right now with folding devices. Um, so you got to kind of weigh all these things. I, I think I think discontinuing the note and saying, if you want a note, you have to go to folding, that's a huge jump. And almost, like I said, it alienates your audience and whatnot. I, I, have a, I understand that thinking, like maybe for us tech people, like, you know, quickly, you know, we adapt and we like those kind of quick changes, but for an overall market of note users, that's hard to say. I don't know. I, uh, I have a hard time seeing people jumping on board with that right away. So, I mean, I guess we'll have to see what happens, right? Jermaine King with a nod. Appreciate it. <laughs> you guys get it. Um, Stephen D says, which one comes to Snapdragon 888? Um versus Exynos chipset. Okay, so it depends on what area of the world you're in, Steven. So if you're in North America, you're gonna get the Snapdragon 888. I believe parts of Europe get the Exynos uh, chipset, okay? Um, that's the most general way I can put it. But I know here in North America, Canada, US, Mexico, we get the Snapdragon. There was a time here in Canada where we got the Exynos, but now it's Snapdragon, so. Should be good to go. You go, how you doing? Steven D likes the violet. Dude, I like the violet too. It's nice. Like, I, I would rock that. I would totally rock that. And that's why I'm kind of like on the fence about the S21 or S21 FE for myself personally. Again, we're going to talk about that. We're going to do a comparison here. Uh, another red salmon color phone. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to see it in person. Uh, the red on the S20 FE was nice, but this looks to be a little bit lighter. Again, sometimes these marketing pictures and whatnot... Uh, definitely look a little bit different. I dig the Phantom Black. Now, here's something about the Phantom Black color. Do you guys remember the keynote Samsung did? I think I timed it. I actually watched it again today. And they they spent like well over two minutes explaining how they made this color of black. And I don't recall any other OEM ever going that deep into how they picked this color. I get it. It was interesting, but it was deep. Like, it, <laughs> like they didn't just pick black. It had to be this kind of black. It had to reflect the color this way. It had to feel like this. Also, do you guys notice with all the colors as well? No fingerprints or very fingerprint resistant, right? They're all very matte type colors. The way the the way the frosted glass is used there, I really like that. OEMs, listen up, please. All OEMs, not just Sammy. Please, everybody, listen up. Please, please listen to my. This is my request. This is Zach's request for the rest of 2021. OEMs, please listen. Matte colors, frosted glass. We do not like fingerprints. Okay, <laughs> please run with that. Okay, that's gonna be a clip. <laughs> that's gonna be a clip right there. Uh, I want that for 2021. That's definitely on my wish list. I like that. Like I have that on my on my um, iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's that frosted glass. Uh, for the first two weeks, I used it without a case. Didn't get any fingerprints on it. I mean, obviously, if your fingers are covered in crap, <laughs> you're going to get stuff on there. But no regular, you know, oily fingerprints, which was nice. So, all right, going through here. Jermaine says, get the Ultra. Of course. <laughs> That's Jermaine's pick right there. Um, yeah. Well, you know what, Kyle? I mean, it's not really forcing you to use the, the case. Obviously, if you don't want to lose the pen, get the case, right? But I can see there being people that get the the new S Pen and don't get a case because maybe they only use the S Pen at their desk. Maybe they put it in their bag. Maybe they put it in their shirt pocket. I mean, right? It's nice to have the option, though. It's good that they gave a, a nice case there. So good point about this. We are going to talk about this. Uh, Press says no memory expansion that takes feature away from every generation. Remember remote IRC and heart rate sensors. Yes. So in regards to uh, heart rate sensors and things like that, that used to be in the Galaxy series. So you used to be able to put your finger over a uh, fingerprint or over a sensor there near the camera. And anyway, it would measure your heart rates, things like that. <clears throat> I think I think one of the main reasons why Samsung, again, I'm, I'm just speculating. Um, the reason they took that out is uh you know they wanted to expand on their watch line you know when you look at for example the apple watch for example this has got all that stuff in there um and if you look at when they took that out and then look at the next line of galaxy watches for example then you saw those features being put in and they are much more accurate 
Again, that's complete speculation. So um, I don't I don't want to say it makes sense, but if you want to have people uh, draw into maybe a new category or something that also complements your existing devices, that makes sense. You know, from a, from a sales perspective and whatnot. And plus, the like I said, the accuracy will be better. Now, as for the expansion, I was actually really surprised to hear about this. So they obviously they didn't announce it. They didn't like Samsung didn't come up on stage on Thursday and say, "Hey, we took an, we took out expandable storage." They didn't do that. What you notice in a lot of the marketing and everything that they talked about is that you know enough storage to store all your pictures. Da, 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 da. There was even a point there where the gal on stage was like, uh, "You know, when I take pictures, I want to have enough room." Da, 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 da. So all the devices start at 128 gigabyte. It's not like they're going to start at 64 and then jump up or start at 32 or something like that. I think those days are gone. Uh, but they really put an emphasis on how much storage is in these devices. So again, 128, 256, or 512. Um, you know, rather than going and rather than giving us a reason or whatnot for taking it out, it's here's how much storage you have. Now, here's the thing. All of us tech nerds watching, all of us listening, watching this, you know, that, that may pay, play back the clips later on, we all know what kind of storage to get, right? We know to buy the fastest possible. We know, you know, which, you know, what kind of brand to get. Typically, you would probably go with a Samsung brand or, or something like that if you have a preference. Obviously, you want to make sure you get the fastest storage possible. It's a known fact that no matter, you know, how fast you go, there's still going to be possibly some delay between uh, you know the internal memory storage that's on your device and then accessing that SD card, okay? No matter how fast you go because it's accessing a different area altogether. I mean, that's basically in layman terms how to put it, okay? But what if you don't know, right? What if you, you're just, like I said, the everyday kind of person, you're not that, you know, you know things about cameras and you know that you want Samsung and you like this app and this and that, but you don't know a lot about store, expandable, expandable storage. So you jump onto Amazon or wherever it is and you buy some expandable storage, right? You buy a micro SD, right? So let's say you buy 128 gigabytes. If it's not the right speed or compatible, you might have problems with this brand new device. You might lose all your stuff. So there's your argument for keeping internal. Myself personally, I haven't used a micro SD extendable storage. Wow, when was the last time I used probably the Galaxy S8. I think the Galaxy S8 or Galaxy S7 was the last time I expanded my storage because I got tired of how sometimes there was a delay. And I also have lost information, data in the past. Okay. I'm not saying it's a fault of the device. It's just the card failed. So I always started for myself personally, I started buying higher memory. I made a promise. I made a, <laughs> I promised myself, Hey, buy only 64 gigabytes going forward. And now that the minimum is 128, that's enough for me. And that's enough for me, personally. I take a ton of pictures, a ton of video. You guys know that uh, across five email addresses and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Clubhouse and all that. You know, all the stuff right now, right? So uh, if I can use 128 gigabytes and be fine with it, I would think most people can as well. Of course, everybody's situation is different. If you're recording 8K video, that's going to take up a huge chunk as well. So I see the arguments for it, but I also understand how some people are upset about it. Maybe you don't have access to the, the same sort of data, or maybe you have a cap on your data usage with your carrier or whatnot. So I understand how some people would be upset with this. However, you need to look at it and go, okay, at least they're giving you 128 gigabytes to start with. It's not 64 or something smaller than that. So. Phantom Black looks mad nice, Ross says this. We got a super chat here from Michael Pepper. Thank you, sir. This one's for you as well. All right, all right, all right. And also one more time. All right, so. <laughs> Hashtag no charger. As you guys all know, let's let's back up a bit, okay? Uh, starting with the uh, iPhone 12, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, Apple announced that their iPhones would no longer have power adapters, power charger, power brick, okay? Power adapter is, is the proper term. Um, and it's not just the iPhone 12, it's all models going forward. So every model iPhone will no longer have a power adapter. Reasons for this, uh, Apple 
uh, obviously announced things like, uh, you know, environmental savings there to uh, reduce waste and bringing the price point down. There's various other reasons as well, but those are your key reasons as an environmental initiative. As suspected, <laughs> and as proven with the announcement on Thursday, Samsung also did the same thing. They took out the power adapter and told us it's because environmental reasons. Now, I would suspect for the majority of people that are here tonight, you probably have one or two chargers kicking around the house. Maybe you didn't even take a charger out of the box because you upgrade every few months or every year or something like that. Let me be really clear. One, I don't, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with it at all. I think it's, um, you know, if you're a new customer, uh, if you're the kind of person that only has one or two chargers, especially if you're kind of the everyday consumer, uh, you know, you're going to be looking at an alternative. You're going to be looking at, how come the charger's not there? However, the price change and the reduction this year does reflect that. I'm not giving Samsung a pass on this at all. I am as just as upset as, as some of you. Um, however, I do agree with the environmental initiatives, although I would like to see some strong data from Samsung and from Apple, hopefully within a year to prove and show us how much has been reduced. No, not just estimations. I want to see some strong data of why this is done. And, you know, some further, I don't want to say justification, but that's basically it, right? I want to know, you know, has this actually helped, right? So, you know, that being said, I guess we can go into this next part here. Um, if you are going to purchase, if you if you need to purchase a charger, if you need to purchase, um, you know, a power adapter for your devices this year, whether it's Apple or an Android, or Samsung, or whatever, I'm going to strongly recommend you look at something like this from Anchor. Okay. Now I know this is a little bit bigger, and I'm going to recommend the Anchor brand for a few reasons. One, I've purchased Anchor stuff for years. They're they're their Bluetooth speakers, I've purchased their cables, I've purchased their power adapters. They make fantastic, fantastic products. Down in the description of this live stream, of this video, you're going to find a link for Amazon Canada and Amazon US for this charger. Now, the reason I recommend this one is, this, this is the reason why. One, it's small and compact, 30 watt. It's also 18 watt power delivery. So you will get fast charging on both your lightning, so iOS and Android devices. You have, you guys can see that there, a USB-C and a USB-A plug-in. So you can use your old USB-A to USB-C cables, or you can use the new USB-C to USB-C cable that comes with the Samsung, or on this, right, again, right here with the USB-C plug-in here, you can use the USB-C to lightning. So this will get you by with all your cables and future cables, so USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to Lightning, USB-A to Lightning, USB-A to, light, uh, to USB-C, okay? So you have both a USB-A output, a traditional, and a USB-C output, okay? Foldable tongs, yay, just like that. And, and also a very satisfying click. There it is right there. <laughs> and also a little, this little light lights up, little blue light, okay? I've left a link for you guys down below. It is an affiliate link. So if you guys wanna check it out, you can. I would definitely recommend this. They do make some smaller versions, but if you're going to pick up any third party, these are guys right here. Now they did not sponsor this. They did not tell me to do this. I, again, I purchased this over a year ago. Uh, I have used this to sustain the power on my MacBook. It will not charge my MacBook, but if my MacBook's at 60%, it'll stay there at 60%. I wouldn't recommend this to charge a MacBook, for example, or any computer. But for your mobile devices, this is great. And again, because you're going to have both plugs on there. Okay, especially with the USB-C with the power delivery. Okay, so there's a link down below if you guys want to check that out. Okay, definitely, definitely check that out. Yeah, but good point there going back to the expandable. Uh, Samsung EVO SSD are the fastest, most expensive, yeah. Uh, fast memory is not, <laughs> memory is, is, is generally pretty affordable, uh, but when it comes to, you know, SSDs and whatnot, you know, uh, you can definitely save some money depending on what your needs are. Uh, for example, 
Uh, I'll give you an example here. Uh, like I use this right here. This is a T5. I use this for editing all my videos and everything. Is there faster? Yes. Do I need faster for when I'm doing a Final Cut Pro? No. No. I could go faster, but it makes no difference. It really doesn't. Uh, so I go with the T5 because it is a little bit cheaper. Again, it's, it's good to know what you're getting into here. We got the boats in the house. Hello, all. Yeah. I was always maxed out of storage on phone uh, and now use cloud storage even more than ever. 4K takes up so much space. Dude, I totally know. Like, I record everything 4K 30, 4K 24 on my phones. Like, I'm always removing those videos because <laughs> it takes up a lot. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence as well about going 128 or 256. We will see. Oh, I, I just saw this now from Michael Pepper. There it is right there. Where is it? Uh, <gasps> oh, no. I, I moved some things on my stream deck. Here it is. Cucumber. <laughs> All right. Bob Grimes. Zach will start shaving his head, drinking <laughs> cucumber, strawberry, and drink, taking off his shirt. Okay. Maybe. I got. Okay. Here's the truth. So all the barbers and all the haircut shops <laughs> here in Calgary, here in Alberta, here in Canada, uh, at least in my province, uh, have been shut down since like the start of December. Like, look at my beard, guys. Look at, right? Like, I don't think I've ever had this long. So I'm going in tomorrow to get things cleaned up. Um, I have a huge, I have a mop on my head right now. It's terrible. That's why I'm wearing the hat. I'm not going to take off the hat. <laughs> but uh, hopefully things will be cleaned up for tomorrow's stream. Again, everybody, remember, have your notifications turned on. Streaming again tomorrow at 9.15 p.m. Eastern. And again, Wednesday, 9.15 Eastern p.m. Okay, and then clips on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So again, streams Monday, Wednesday, clips Tuesday, Thursday. All right. Anchor. That's right, buddy. Like Anchor. I love them. Cause just because they've been so dependable. Yep. Ace brings up a good point here. Apple removes 3.5. Never had extendable storage. Remove the brick in your buds. Others follow suit no matter how much guff was given. Others are going to, uh, are other, are they also going to follow portless? Dude, I think it's going to happen. I mean, we've seen wireless charging forever. Uh, I'll tell you guys the truth here. I mean, I actually don't plug in. I actually don't plug in my note all that often. I have the dual charger so I can lay it down or stand it up and I put it on there at night. I very rarely actually plug in my devices unless I'm on a long trip somewhere or in a situation where I have to plug in. I prefer wireless charging. It's just more convenient. Now, I know there's some of you that like to plug in your device and use it at the same time. First of all, try not to do that. That is really hard on your phone's battery to plug in and use at the same time. You'll notice that when you plug in and use at the same time, your device gets very, very warm, almost hot. It's because it's working overtime. It's charging and it's also trying to do all the things you're doing. Okay, so listen to me. Candy Crush can wait. Okay, plug it in, walk away for 15 minutes, go outside, look at the sky, you know, call your mom. Okay, <laughs> don't use your phone. <laughs> don't use your phone while it's plugged in and charging. Okay, just don't. If you want to extend your battery life, Here's a tip for you, and this is proven. Here's a tip. Keep your battery above 15% and below 90, if possible, okay? Above 15 and below 90. And you will extend that battery's life beyond the typical two, two and a half years, if you're the kind of person that doesn't upgrade all the time. There's a really great article uh, from Android Central about that. So I would definitely, you know, if you're looking to extend your battery, if you guys know people that don't, don't upgrade that often, let them know. Keep it between 15 and 90, especially if they only upgrade every th two or three years. You know, that will definitely extend the life of that lithium ion battery. Don't use your phone while it's plugged in. <sighs> Terrible, terrible idea. Don't do that, okay? Um, there's a clip right there. <laughs> I got to start making notes of all these clips because I have to scrub through this tonight. All right. Bob says, I love my Anchor iOS charging station. Watch iPhone and AirPods. There you go. Bob loves his Anchor. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Samsung had a uh, had to plan this months ago due to the box changes. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got their heads to the ground. I think a lot of people talk within the industry and whatnot, and here we are. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not happy with the change, but I'm more than happy to recommend a really great charging brand guys and you know 
even though I don't work directly with them, like I've purchased their stuff for years and I hope you guys can trust that. I've done some uh, videos on some Anchor stuff in the past, like my really old videos if you guys look them up on my channel. Um, so, you know, I've had this for over a year. Uh, in fact, if I look up here, when did I buy this? I bought that charger July of 2019. So like over a year, over a year, over a year ago. And it's been totally awesome. I've used, my wife used it on, my wife has used it on her Galaxy S10e. I've used it on my Note. I've used it on my iPhone. I've used this for my tablets. It's great. I have, in fact, I should get another one for the studio here. This one's usually upstairs for the family to use. So going through the chat here. Now we're gonna get into uh, our next topics here. Yeah, clean it up, Zach. <laughs> Thanks, Don. How are your Canucks doing? Hey, how'd that game go the other night, Don? How'd the game go last night, Don? How are your Canucks doing, buddy? 3 nothing. That's what I thought. 3 nothing. All the non-hockey fans are like, what? What? <laughs> Don knows I'm teasing. At least I hope so. But I'm really not. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> we whipped your butts. Anyway, um, same here in Quebec. I look like a Wookiee. Awesome. You go. I, I, did I know you were in Quebec? Anyway, um, going through the chat here. Then we're gonna get into the next in the next little bit here. Again, guys, we're over an hour here. Appreciate you guys being here tonight. Um, Bob, be nice. Be nice. Um, I hope you didn't leave. <laughs> All right. Now let's get into some comparison here. If I can find my next tab here. All right, Don's having a good laugh, awesome. All right, let's get into our next comparison here, people. Uh, I wanna compare, because you guys know I reviewed and I went extensively into the S20 FE and the Samsung Galaxy S21. So again, the introductory S21 and last year's hype, uh, the S20 FE, which by the way, the S20 FE is still an excellent buy. I would still totally recommend it. And uh, we're gonna get into the reasons why. I'm going to show you guys how minimal those changes are between the S20 FE and the S21. I have to be really careful with <laughs> mixing up my letters and my numbers here. All right, let's go in here. Share screen. All right, so now we're comparing the Galaxy S20 FE versus the Galaxy S21 5G. Again, they're both 5G. Okay, all their devices are 5G. Everything going forward with Samsung is going to be 5G. Again, we're going to click on differences. You guys are gonna see. So again, the S20 FE is on the left here. S20 FE are here on the left. On the right, we have the 20, the new 21. Okay, S21, S20 FE on the left, 21 on the right, 20 on the left, 21 on the right. Okay. September. So it's only been out for three, four months, I guess. Uh, and obviously, the 21 comes out here on the 29th. Yeah. Uh, when we take a look at the size differences, okay. Again, the S20. FE is 6.5 inches. The 21 comes at 6.2 inches. So the S20 FE is just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. It's a little bit heavier too at 190 grams compared to 170, 169 grams over here. Okay. Super AMOLED on both of them. Uh, we got dynamic AMOLED, basically the same kind of thing. Honestly, I, I don't think you're going to be able to tell the difference with your with your blind A's blind ease sorry blind eyes and again both support 120 hertz refresh hdr 10 okay really nice really nice and smooth you guys know i had a really good experience with that uh as we all know the s20 fe again the one on the left here s20 fe is uh you know a plastic build the s21 the new one plastic back okay that's why when you look at the price differences of these, we're gonna go to the top here. Uh, the pricing here of this S20 up here, this is not accurate, uh, but the outright pricing from Samsung is $799 for the 21, for the S20 FE, so, you know, just a few months ago, is actually $699. So $699 for the S20 FE, then $100 more for the new one, okay? Again, it's the new hotness, right? Android 10 versus Android 11. Obviously, the uh, the FE will be an, uh, upgraded eventually to 11 there. Uh, One UI 3.0 versus One UI 3.1 here. Um, again, very similar experiences. Now, when it comes to what's under the hood, last year's S20 FE, Snapdragon 865. 
The new one, Snapdragon 888, okay? You guys know this. I told you about this with uh, my experiences. In my everyday experience with the S20 FE, I did not experience any slowdowns, any lags, any issues like that. Anything that would be possibly processor related. I did not experience anything. So I'm confident that with the Snapdragon 888, it should be it should be the same. There, there really should be no difference. Um, when it comes to memory here, let me go back to the screen share here. Uh, when it comes to memory, I'm gonna go back here. We have eight gigabytes of RAM and eight gigabytes of RAM. So the same in terms of memory and in terms of storage, again, 128 or 128, excuse me, let me uh, back that up again. You're gonna get 128 and six gigabytes of RAM, excuse me, on the S20 FE, eight gigabytes of RAM on the 21, okay? So that does make, that's one, that's one of your reasons for that $100 increase right there. That memory does make a bit of a difference. But in terms of storage there, they both start at 128, okay? Oh, we got Latrell in the house. Uh, my S20 FEs are, are on the way. I thought you already had them, dude. <laughs> I guess he didn't. Um, going to continue going through here. Now, here is something that's key for a lot of people. When we look at the cameras, so play attention here. Both camera systems are using a 12 megapixel wide as their main suit, uh, shooters. The f-stop is the same at 1.8, okay? Everything is practically the same on that main shooter between the S20 FE and the S21, okay? When it comes to the telephoto, however, you got an 8 megapixel with the S20 FE, a 64 megapixel uh, with, or with the hybrid zoom, the 1X, 1.1 and 3X hybrid zoom there on the 21. Again, that's a reason for that slight price increase over the FE model. Again, it's not a fan edition model. It's one of their main models. So there again, one of your main differences. And then when you look at the ultra wide, as you guys can see here, the ultra wide, they're both at 12. Okay, and again, f-stops, everything is practically the same. You have 120 degrees on the on the F21, or sorry, the S21, 123 degrees. So a three degree difference between the two, which I don't think is gonna make a huge difference. Um, I mean, take an extra step back, I guess, or whatever, right? Recording features and whatnot are all practically the same. Of course, with the 21, you're gonna have the 8K availability. That's one of the biggest differences there when it comes to the video side of things. Selfie camera, now, the fan edition is a 32 megapixel selfie camera. The 21 is 10. Now, bigger numbers don't necessarily mean a better picture. Uh, we've seen great pictures with 8K, or sorry, 8K, excuse me, 8 megapixel uh, selfie cameras. So, you know, again, fan edition, they definitely jam packed that in there for the, uh, for the, um, for the uh, fan edition there. The, the, sorry, the 32 megapixel, excuse me. Now, everything else is practically the same. Um, here's, a, here's a nice difference. With the FE 4,500 milliamp battery, the 21 is only 4,000. 500 milliamp uh, difference there, which uh, can be significant. So uh, definitely something to think about, okay? Both will support fast charging, okay? Uh, and again, you can use that anchor charger that I showed you guys there. You'd be good to go. And of course, obviously, color differences and whatnot. So as you guys can see here, between the S21 and the S20 FE from just a few months ago, there's not a lot of difference. It really comes down to a, a difference of $100 if you're purchasing outright. But again, depending on your carrier, what uh, agreements you have, trade-ins, things like that, you need to make a decision. You know, what's the better buy and everything like that. Uh, obviously the best value from a value standpoint, I'm just going based on the specs here. Okay, again, I have not used the S21 yet. But just based on specs as for bang for buck, I'm still going to say the S20 FE is probably the better buy between those two. Um, but I am really intrigued to see some of the camera changes and improvements on the S21, the Plus, and the Ultra um, in terms of the software and whatnot and what's plugged in there. So, um, you know, hopefully once I get myself, get my hands on one of those, I can bring you guys, you know, my impressions, my review and whatnot. So...
I love how mo I love how most <laughs> sorry I love how most uh, sorry I sorry Latrell says first of all Latrell this is even I love most how the S20 FE has a 30 times zoom uh, call me crazy yeah you know I like I liked the the zooms uh, on all of them uh, one thing that they showed in the presentation is it looks like the stabilization when you're going past 30 and 50 on the new 21 series it looks to be stabilized a lot better this year. Um, I've always said this, that if you're going to use, you know, beyond 10, 10x kind of thing, use some stabilization if possible. You use a tripod, a, a Pixie Mini, whatever it is. Um, but it looks like a lot of that shake and possible noise that could be introduced has been eliminated. Of course, when you add on, you know, the increases to the telephoto on the 21, whatnot, as we saw there at 64 megapixels, uh, that's going to help with clarity. And obviously with the software, clearing things up and... Uh, you know, making things a lot, a lot nicer, you know. Yeah, it's a 32 dude. That's one of the biggest things with that. They really pushed when they were pushing the marketing on that. It's a 32 megapixel in the FE. I'm not sure what you mean by Halo product, but I, <laughs> I think it's a heck of a buy. I really do. I'm still on the fence about getting it between that and the S21. Uh, so we'll see what happens now. Uh, I had some people on Twitter and uh, this past week and other streams ask, Zach, are you getting the S21, the, tw the Plus, or the Ultra? First of all, let me tell you guys this. I have made a request to Samsung to re review one or one of, the, one of those devices. I told them, you know, I'm open to checking out any of them. So I've made that request. However, I am also checking in with my carrier, my guy tomorrow, to see if I can get uh, some sort of deal or something done. So I do plan on upgrading whatnot. Um, if I can't get the kind of deal that I want, I'm still definitely picking up the S20 FE because it's, I, I, you know, between the S20 FE and the Note 20 Ultra that I was sent last year from Samsung, again, they were rev review devices and rev with review devices, you have to send them back, okay? Um, I actually had a really good time. I had more fun with the S20 FE than I did the Note. The Note was great, nothing wrong with the Note, but the Note is a Note is a Note. I mean, obviously there are improvements this and that. You guys know I love that chunky camera, but I just loved how much Samsung packed into that S20 FE. I was like, how is this a $699 phone? Like really, <coughs> it still blows me away. It's still a great buy. Um, A says here, but what kind of trading can you do if you have a phone trading between the FE um, and S21. Again, you need to check on the trade-in values. You need to see what Samsung might be offering directly. My understanding is the trade-in values this year are a lot better than any other year. Again, you need to check with their website. You also need to check with your carrier. You may be able to get a better deal with your carrier. Um, some carriers will give you a better deal. They'll give you, you know, so much towards the phone and then so much in credits, you know, for, for signing up additional time with them. Again, it depends on your carrier, right? So... Much better stabilization. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm again, let's try this. One of the things I'm, I'm looking to possibly to hopefully test with the S21 series is I want to take pictures like using like a 30 extra 50 times zoom with my hands and then putting in a tripod and seeing what the difference is. Right. I think that would be a lot of fun to see, especially if it's like a moving object and whatnot. Obviously, if, if you're what you're zooming in is obviously still that's going to be a lot better. So we'll see. Uh, Zach's got uh, a guy in Jersey getting a phone for only two dollars. <laughs> Stop it, Bob. This guy, Bob. I'll tell you guys. Oh yeah. All right, people. Let me go through my list here. I think we've gone over everything I wanted to talk about tonight. We did the comparisons between the three models. Uh, we went through uh, the anchor. Um, you know, suggestion there for Charger. Uh, again, Anchor does have some smaller models. They have a model called the Nano, which is very small. It looks like the traditional iPhone chargers, uh, and it is a fast charger. But uh, the only reason I, the, only, the biggest reason why I recommend this one is because of compatibility with different types of cables. So if you're like me, where I still have USB-A to Lightning, USB-A to U, uh, USB-C hanging around the house, and they also have USB-C to USB-C cables, for example, or USB-C to Lightning, I mean, this this takes care of everything, right? Like, I really like this little charger. Plus, you know, the fact that the tongs fold up and everything like that is really nice. And it's not it's not heavy at all. It's really quite light. So, 
Montrell says, the S20 FE has crazy trade-ins right now. You can uh, trade in an iPhone 11 or 12 and buy S20 FE for literally $25. Yeah, dude, they, Samsung usually like right around like when they announce devices is some of their best trade-in deals and whatnot. So, you go, you go right here has the Nano from Anchor. He loves it. I know, sorry, excuse me. He says it's great, which I think is pretty much the same thing. So, all right, now. I was, no, I don't need to show you guys that screen because we talked about the pricing there. I actually have the pricing up here from, from Samsung. Um, but yeah, if I'm looking at the S21 uh, introductory pricing is, is $799. The S20 FE is $699. So again, $100 difference there. And I think it's justified because of the camera differences and whatnot. And some of the improvements here there. And again, it's $100 difference. But again, with your trade-ins or your carrier deals, whatever definitely search that all out don't just just don't go by make sure you guys are checking out what you can get directly through samsung what you can get through your carriers whatnot okay do you have an older device you can trade in things like that all right uh we're gonna go skip this song there's a reason why we're gonna skip that song we've come to that time of the night folks Yes, Travis uh, has a great video it says here about buying Amazon renewed phones and getting more for the S21 trade in value. Yep, uh, I have not, <laughs> I haven't watched that video yet. But Travis has a great series of videos about Amazon renewed. Definitely would recommend them. Um, it seems like there's really good value there as well. If you're okay with a renewed device, um, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure there's obviously warranty with that and whatnot. So definitely check that out. All right, people. So I'm gonna pick someone here. I'm gonna pick, who am I gonna pick? I need to, and Don already knows what's gonna happen here. Don already knows what's gonna happen here. <laughs> I'm going through here and uh, Bob Grimes. Bob Grimes, are you there, Bob? Bob, we have to do our outro here. Bob, I need to know, do you want the robot or the water driveway? Bob, do you want the robot or the water driveway? I need to know from you, Bob. I need to know. Bob gets to pick the outro. <laughs> Sorry, Ace, I already picked I already picked Bob. I'm assuming he's still there. Or he can, I don't, I hope he's not driving or something. <laughs> and he's going to pick here, our outro here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to remind you guys again. Uh, you guys will see one or two clips from me tomorrow from this stream. Okay. And then Monday, tomorrow, again, another stream at 9.15 p.m. Eastern. Clips on Tuesday. Stream again on Wednesday, 9.15 p.m. Eastern. And then clips on Thursday. So again, Monday, Wednesday streams. Tuesday, Thursday clips. I'll still be on the Painfully Honest Tech podcast. Okay. Bob says he wants the robot. Bob says he wants the robot. Oh, yeah. Dang it, Bob, Jermaine says. <laughs> Bob wins. There you go. So Bob wants the robot. So, again, everybody, I appreciate you guys all being here tonight. Uh, I hope I brought some value to you guys. I hope you guys... Uh, I hope you guys learned something tonight. I, I enjoyed the discussions. I'm looking forward to this next evolution, this next change. Zach Talks Tech. Again, it's going to be streams like this Monday, Wednesday, clips on Tuesdays and Thursdays, possibly additional content Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Again, I need time to do other things. <laughs> um, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. You know. Um, so again, have that subscribe. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you guys have that notifications on because we need to teach that algorithm that Zach has clips now, you know, you need you guys to, to drop a comment, share it, all that kind of stuff, like it, everything like that. I, I don't often go into a thing about this kind of stuff, guys, but your support and help to let, to let YouTube know that, Oh, Hey, Zach has clips that are released during the day. And we like that. That's very helpful. If you leave a comment, that's even better. If you watch the whole thing through awesome, uh, leaving a comment is, is meant is considered as interaction and whatnot. So, uh, I will tell you right now, I will be using titles for these clips. <laughs> that will get your attention. <laughs> I don't want to call them triggering, um, but they will be triggering. <laughs> so um, I love you guys all. I love doing this. Um, 
I really hope this works out because, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's been kind of stressing me out and everything. Um, but I, I love the live interaction and the loosey goosey, um, the way I present things and whatnot. It's everything I've always wanted to do my whole life. And uh, because I, I originally wanted to go into radio broadcasting and I didn't pursue that. Um, I wish I had. And uh, I think this is almost better because it's a worldwide audience. I mean, I got people from Hong Kong here, Sweden, United States, Canada. Uh, it's absolutely insane. So I appreciate all of you that come here every week, that go to the streams, that watch the videos, that interact with me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. It, it really means the world. And uh, it makes it so much fun. And if we can all have a laugh and learn something along the way, hey, bonus, right? Awesome. All right. Bob Grimes, he wants the robot. I'll catch you guys all later. Take care. Cheers.